Hey YouTube, so it's Shane here, and this video is getting started with the Raspberry Pi Part 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to control LEDs using push buttons. This video will give you a basic understanding of how to read from inputs and write to outputs, as well as explain what a logic tree is, and also what is interrupts. So let's get started. So here is my Raspberry Pi, and here is my breadboard. On my breadboard, I've got three LEDs and three push buttons. On the right of your screen now, you should see the diagram of how it's all connected. It's very simple. Uh, GPIO, there's three GPIO pins connected to the three positive leads of the LEDs. The negative side of the LEDs is connected to ground. And the push buttons, the positive side or the one side of the switch is connected to 3.3 volts. And the other side of the switch is connected to GPIO. So when you push the button, it sends 3.3 volts to the Raspberry Pi. So let's move over to the computer and you can see what I'm doing on the software side. Hey guys, so I'm on the computer and uh, I'm open terminal already. And as we did last time, I'm just going to type in SSH, pi, because that's the user account at, and then your IP address. My, that's my IP address, but obviously this will be different in your setup. And uh, the easiest way, as I mentioned in the previous video, is just to plug in a monitor into the HDMI port on your Raspberry Pi and it will you can see the IP address on the screen. It's one of the last things it displays. So I'm going to hit enter. And this guy's my password. Uh, the default password is Rosbian. I mean, it's Raspberry, sorry. But as I showed you in the previous video, you would have changed that. So now I've changed mine. I've typed it in, hit enter, and then voila, you're logged in. So let's get straight to it. You basically need to create another Python script to, uh, to control the LEDs using the push button. So let's do that. We're going to type in nano test2. That's what I want to call it. And uh, just basically, the dot python is important, but whatever you put before that, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it test2 because this is video 2. There we go, so we've opened it. Now, because we created a file in the previous video, I want to actually open that, open that up as well because it's got a lot of stuff that we can just copy and paste from. So let's go uh, shell, new window, open a new window, and uh, same thing, just connect to the app address, password again. Enter and boom, we're there. And uh, the last one I called it test. So let's type in test. Boom. And there we go, there's the previous uh, Python script we created. So now I'm going to copy it basically. I basically highlight it, say copy, copy, here, click paste. Boom, done. Then I'm going to copy the next thing, which is this uh, set mode. Let's copy that as well. And uh, in Python, you use hash to put a comment. So I'm going to actually put a comment in here. I'm going to say set up GPIO. So we basically, so we also kind of know what we're doing. Next thing I'm going to do is set up, set up the outputs. So let's put set up outputs. Okay. And uh, here's how you set up the outputs. We used it in the previous one. Boom. Copy that. Put into paste it. And uh, we're going to use three LEDs, so I'm going to paste it three times. And then we need to label, well, we need to fill in the corresponding numbers. And so, as you can see on the right of the screen with the diagram, it is connected to, port, uh, G, the LEDs are connected to 17, 27, and 22. So let's type that in. Let's change this to 27 and 22. So we set those up. Cool. And so now we're going to go uh, back to the website. Um, you know how to get to Actually, let's go back to Google so I can show you. Uh, University type in Raspberry GPIO. Google Raspberry GPIO. It's the one here. You know, to the library. Click on that. Click on this whole like bunch of stuff, which I showed you in the previous video. But I will put a link in the description of how to get to this examples page, the inputs. So we're right here. So I'm going to link this in the description or annotation and just click it. So what we're going to do is we need to set up the uh, inputs, which we're going to use this line for. Uh, just take note here where it says pull up, pull up down. It says GPIO pull P U D dash down, which stands for pull up down. And we're actually pulling up down, which basically means that with digital, well, with the, let me just quickly explain, with digital systems, if you don't have a pull-up resistor connected to GPIO, the GPIO will essentially float. And what that basically means is it 
won't go down to zero and it won't go up to 3.3 volts, which is what the Raspberry Pi runs on, but it will float. And if there's enough static electricity in the air, like it, or whatever the processor decides, there's enough like radiant energy, it can actually float up high enough because uh, on the on 3.3 volts, remember that it's only reading a zero, is a digital pin, so it's only reading either a zero or a one, correct? And so if it floats above 1.5 volts, it will read it as a one. And so generally the float is actually pretty close. Like I've seen most of the time it float around like 1.4 volts. Um, and then yeah, any static electricity or anything in the air or just random extra energy that the process is, re that is releasing, it will actually trigger. So you don't want that. So you want to make sure you put a pull down resistor in there. Either you can do it on the board, just like a 10K resistor between um, the GPIO and ground, or you can use the software ones. Um, and so we're going to use the software ones because they're just convenient. So let's put in here, uh, set up inputs. And then just paste this in here. Boom, boom. Okay, cool. And uh, as you can see on the diagram on your right, these are connected to pins. What are they connected to? 23, 24, and 18. So let's do that. Let's type in 24, 23, 18. Let's do that. There we go. So we got all those in there. And then comes the fun part. So let me explain a bit about interrupts. Okay, whoops. So what is what is an interrupt? Well, so essentially on your uh, on your actually here we go. We can do this with this. There's a good example right here. Okay, so yeah, it's called it's called test inputs polling. So what polling is is the CPU is continuously checking to see if there's been any change. Has has the voltage on this pin gone above 1.5 volts or below? So essentially, is it on or is it off? You know. And it will constantly do this. It's, it's the only way they'll, like, using this code, for instance, they'll do it. And then they'll, it says here, as they actually nicely commented, it says, wait, wait 10 milliseconds to give CPU a chance to do other things. And the reason you have to put this wait in there is because if you just have a whole bunch of polling, like, the CPU would be so busy constantly checking, it, would, it wouldn't do anything else. And you basically hit the, like, your CPU would just go 100% and then that's it. You know what I mean? It'd be very wasteful. Um, so what we what we came up with is a system called interrupts. And what interrupts is it's basically like a function that gets called. So the CPU can do whatever it's doing, and then it gets an inter an interrupt will happen. An interrupt will basically the CPU will go, oh, so something's changed in my GPIO. Let me go check that. So we're going to use interrupts, and they call it interrupt as edge detection. Um, we can actually use the one here which says switch debounce. Um, so let me also explain debounce quick. Debounce is basically the CPU in, in like the Raspberry Pi and other digital devices is really quick. Like it's very, very quick. So if you push the button down, right, it will it could detect that as multiple presses because every time it's polling, it is seeing, oh, so th this this one's positive, this one's positive, this one's you know what I mean? So this one's I like got this one is 3.3 volts, this one's 3.3 volts. But it'll do it coupled like times a second. So even you go to push the button really quickly, it will like read it as multiple uh, presses. And so if we, we're going to put in a toggle system later, um, with that, we'll just turn it, like the LED will just flash. It will turn on off constantly while you're holding the button down. When you let it go, it might end up being on or might end up being off. So we want to debounce that. And so this library's got a nice function in there called debounce. Um, and so what debounce basically does is it, it essentially waits. So when you push the button down, it, it waits for it to return back to zero. So when you push the button and let go, it will then allow you to, to basically trigger it again. And the nice thing about it is this actually triggers it on the, and it says here, or it says GPIO rising, it triggers it on the, the, in our case, when we push the button down and not when we let it go. If we change the GPIO rising to uh, dropping, uh, what do they actually call it? They call it something else. Well, they call it dropping, don't they? Um, uh, falling or something. Uh, maybe, where do they say it? Which, this actually comes really useful sometimes, but it is here somewhere. I can't find it there. Um, where is edge detection? A rising edge? Uh, they call it falling edge. 
So, what do they call it? It's falling. It's falling. Yeah, here we go. GPIO falling or GPIO both. So you can either trigger it on when rising, which is when the voltage is going from like 0 to 3, it will trigger. Or if the voltage is going from 3 to 0, it will trigger. Or on both. And so we just want rising because of the way we wired it up. So let's go here and just copy this. And uh, I am actually going to, whoops, I'm going to actually label this uh, event detection. Let's do event detection. detection. That might be spelled incorrectly. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and I'm going to just paste that. And I'm going to go change this this callback function. We're going to call it LED. And that's going to line up with our callback function that we're going to create just now. So let's just type that in. Rising, blah, 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 blah. We're going to change this now. Oops. To 18. So there we go. 18. I'm then going to copy this. Because we need a copy thing. You know what I mean? Oops. Go down. Hit paste. Paste. There we go. I'm going to go all the way here. I'm going to change this to 24. 24. There we go. I'm going to change this to 23. 23 is done. Okay, so now we actually need to create the function called LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I'm going to hit enter twice. I'm going to go here and type in uh, function LED. That's just the comment, by the way. And now we're going to type in define, but the short term in Python is diff or DEF, and the name, and then the name we're going to call is LED, right? And then inside these brackets is the variable which gets returned. And if you read the uh, library spec, you'll find that the value it returns is the pin, that we, like so, whatever trigger pin. In our case, you can see it's going to be like 18, 23, or 24 will return those. Let me just put in this, uh, whoops, put in that, hit enter. And Python is very particular about um, indentation. So in order for the next well, command to be underneath or in LED, we need an indentated one. So I've done that. And then I'm actually going to go back to the input page and go to the top. And we're actually going to use a polling request, which is going to be that. Boom. Um, mm, sorry about that. Actually, sorry. Let's go back here. So we've just created the function called LED, and uh, it's going to be returning the pin. So what we need to do is we need to say if, um, let's put this in brackets, pin equals 18, there's this, hit that, we need a double tab, so we need to be many if. We're going to create a, var a variable called output, which all you need to do is type in output, hit a equals, and we're going to make that equal 17. Which basically means when you hit, so that when it detects the button press on pin 18, it's going to create the output value or variable value at 17, which is important for just now. Explain. So I'm basically actually just going to copy this. Um, I'm going to do this three times. So let's just do that. Paste that in there. And make sure your code has the same indentation as this, otherwise, it won't actually work. So we 24, we got 20. Oh, hold on, that's not the right one. Um, let's just make this bigger so we can actually see what's going on. What are the output pins? There we go. So the output pins in this case are 27. So 17, 27, and 22. So we need to put that in there. And then here we need to put in 24, 23, and 18, right? And then I'm actually going to do one more thing. We're going to hit print. There we go. And now I'm going to do a polling request. Let's, whoops. Sorry about that. Let's go here. Let's copy this. Click paste. There we go. We pasted it. And here we're going to change this and we're going to make this output. So, so basically, now what it's doing is it's going to be polling to see uh, if the output is. is positive, well, is high or not. Uh, so is the button pressed. In this case, it's actually an LED, but you can also pull outputs, which is nice. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go here to where it says the other uh, previous code. We're going to use the uh, turn it high value. And uh, we're going to paste that in there. And I'm going to just change this to output. 
There we go. And uh, we need to change this high down to low because we're going to be turning it off. And there we go. Let's copy this line. Copy. Hit enter. I'm going to then hit tab again. I'm going to type in else so that if, for instance, the output. So here, essentially, I'm going to go. It says it goes. If GPIO input output, which is the output is the ver is the variable, which is the pin, so it's gonna check. And it's gonna see is the LED on or is the LED off? If the LED is on, it's gonna turn it off. And if the LED is off, it's gonna turn it on. So that's what this line right here does. It goes and checks to see whether it's on. And if it is on, it runs this code right here, which turns it off. And now we're gonna put an else, which means basically if it is off, then what it needs to do is actually run that code which we're going to change this back to high and that is it actually and uh, that's it, that's it what we do need to do is that if we had to run this right now it would just run and end, it wouldn't stay running we don't really want that, we want it to continue to run so I'm going to just do something called value values of another variable I'm going to say, I'm going to just tell value to be equal to input input and then let's do this, let's do this and say um, Press any key to exit essentially. To exit. Hit that, hit that. Boom, boom. And then we need to actually go back to this page. And let's go back up to the wick and click on general or ref uh, examples, sorry. And then basic use. And then there'll be a thing here called cleanup. I'm just write your GPIO cleanup. And I think it's very important that you just put this in your code. Um, it's actually good, just a good practice to have it in there. And what this does is it releases the GPIO from your program. So essentially, when you hit, when you press any key, it will exit and it will run this GPIO cleanup, which will just release all the pins, so that you don't get an error message um, when you run this program again. So let's do that. Let's hit enter. Uh, so now I've just hit Control O, and I've t hit enter, so it saves. And now I'm going to push Control X, which is going to close. And now let's type in uh, sudo hyphen test two dot hyphen. Hit enter and boom. So you get a whole bunch of error messages. And this is because I've actually written oh well, run this program before, and it didn't have that cleanup in there. And so you shouldn't get this error message now. We've got the cleanup in there. Okay, so let's just turn this turn uh, those LEDs on by hitting the buttons. Boom, boom, boom. And then again, you can turn them off by hitting the buttons, boom, boom, boom. And then you can like, just turn around and one on if you want. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you liked this video. And if you didn't, uh, please dislike. And if you did like it, thumbs it up. Um, please like, comment. Um, if you like, hey, Shane, like, I didn't understand this, I always read the comments and I try to respond as quick as possible. Also, if I forget to do something, like put the link in the description, just comment about that because sometimes that does happen. Um, so yeah, also comment with uh, other videos you'd like me to make and see what you can do with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so yeah, in the next coming, come, like, couple videos, I'm going to show you how to basically integrate uh, MQTT into your Python scripts, um, which allows you to remotely control these LEDs, so you don't have to like just use this like buttons or whatever. And uh, that will allow you to start tying it into some existing automation systems, as well as the one that we're going to create along the journey. So anyways, hope you really enjoyed this video. Check you guys later. Cheers, bye.